Hello, everyone. My name is Steve Orozco, and I'm the Library Assistant in the Exploration and Creativity Department with the Los Angeles Public Library. And I'm here to welcome you to today's special program, Shoebox Alters with Self-Help Graphics. Before we begin, we'd like to thank the National Endowment for the Humanities, our Library Foundation, and our behind-the-scenes staff for helping bring the LA Made programs to you virtually. LA Made focuses on the diverse landscapes of Los Angeles, highlighting the immense artistic and performance talent that has developed in the course of the city's eclectic history. If you would like to see more of our amazing programs, please visit our online calendar at lapl.org slash events. And for our LA Made programs, please visit lapl.org slash LA Made. Our website also has blog posts and video links that highlight the library's diverse resources and upcoming programs. We would also like to take the opportunity to recognize and acknowledge the first people of this land, honor their elders past and present, as well as their descendants who are citizens of these nations. For more information on which territory you may reside on, check out native-land.ca. And now for today's program, Shoebox Altars. In honor of Dia de los Muertos, the Los Angeles Public Library, in collaboration with Self-Help Graphics and Art, is proud to present a virtual workshop on how to make a shoebox altar. Uh, today we will be learning how to create your own miniature altar using a recycled box and other material found in your home. We will also explore the significance of, of sorry, the significance of an ofrenda offering and how they can be used to celebrate loved ones who have since passed on. A list of materials needed for this project is in the description below. And uh, now let's bring on Martha from Self Help Graphics. Hi, Martha. Hi. How's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, we got some of the, the, the this, this, in the description, we have the uh, materials that we're going to be needing. And let's see, it looks like you've already got one started. Yeah, so here you can see the finished product. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll bring it a little closer so you can see. Yeah, let's give you the full screen. There you go. So oh, here great. you see our mini chew box or recycled box, as that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll be teaching you today how to make this mini papel picado, how to make these flores de papel, which are paper flowers and how to make these uh, printed out pictures, frames and decorated. Um, and then we assemble it. So I've already pre-made one up to this point. Okay, so we have it ready. Um, the prepping of the box and the painting, I documented, so we're gonna show you just some pictures. Um, let me see here. So there's, four elements that you have to add into your atar. Um, we have, here at Self-Help Graphics, we have a digital zine that you can actually download, print out. And um, it has four or five activities for Dia de los Muertos. Um, today, we're gonna be making the mini altar. And then, uh, sorry to interrupt, but if you check out in the product, uh, I mean, the program description, we've also put the link for the uh, for the PDF, so you can go ahead and click on that link. And I, uh, we're going to be putting that in the ch in the chat box as well. Thank you. Um, so in here, we have to represent the earth, which is represented by the flores, um, the air, which is represented by the the wind that goes through the papel, um, water. Um, which we usually have a little cup of water representing the agua um, or flower vases with water. And then the lights, which are now LED lights, represent the fire. So those are the four elements. And you can see on here, that's what we're talking about. Okay. So these flores uh, are supposed to be the paper version of these simposuchi. So I'm sure you guys have already seen these. Um, I like to bring a few in to just add them. Um, let me see. Okay. So today we're gonna do, uh, let's start with the flores de papel. 
oh, you know what? We do have uh, the pictures, the slideshow. So we would like to maybe start that first so I can explain the process getting up to the point where we've already painted the box here. All right, I'm ready for the pictures. How do I? Hi, can you play the picture slideshow? Sure, let me let me play the, we'll do the video first, one sec. Or just regular delivery boxes. Uh-huh, next. And then we'll do the slide here. Let me pop that one on. So yeah, I started by prepping the boxes with white paint. Uh, in this case, it was tempera to prime them next. Okay. So in that one, you were painting the box, right? Just like that? Yeah, and then I let it dry in the sun. Next. These are the supplies of the next, uh, once they were dry the next day, then I went ahead and got cereal boxes or chipboard that's about that thickness. I cut them and I made those um, cardboard panels that are the right thickness, stapler, ruler, scissors. And I didn't end up using the glue after all for this. Next. Okay, then next we have another video. For that one, um, I was adding the cereal boxes to kind of give it, so this is where I made the flores, where the flaps of the box ends. Um, okay, next. That's what I ended up with before I decided to draw the flores and then cut them. Next. Okay, we got another video coming up. This one's a little bit longer, so if you want to talk over, uh, just uh, unmute yourself, Martha. Okay. long drawing video sorry <laughs> <laughs> showcasing your art skills uh, let's see what step was that that was number eight okay. so let's go to step nine that's another video this one's going to be a long one too so uh, feel free to unmute yourself if you need to speak over it okay I, i'll just give you the thumbs up when we can stop okay. okay i'm good enough so i was showing there how i went in and started just cutting along the line where i wanted to cut and i made sure that the staples were really securing it as much as possible all right okay. next yeah. and that's what i ended up with yeah, next. It's looking, looking a lot better yeah. mm. they're different from each other right there's like the flatter one that's this one and then there was one that was like thinner and taller and I wanted to see how I can work with both of those types of shapes. So they ended up looking really different from each other, but it's okay because there's no wrong way. You know, you're like making this up as we go along. So this is what the back looks like. And this is the front. So I decided to make this one with you today live and to have this one already completed. It's a smaller one. So, all right. Um, I also really quick want to show you, is there another video or a picture? Sorry. We have a completed one. You want to show that one? Yeah, let's show that. Okay, so that was from last year. And I used an actual shoe box for this, which I like that the lid became the second level and it kind of gave it some depth. But mm -hmm. like I said, you can go with any box. Like we looked in the recycle bin and we found these two, uh, you know, delivery stuff. So I also wanted to show you real fast. If uh, you don't know, this is a uh, pan de muerto with sesame seeds, the traditional bread of uh, usually if this altar were at a, in a home, 
we would put a dish with some pan, some agua, and different, even candy and things that the people that have passed on that we're celebrating would have liked to have. So this is a sugar-covered pan de muerto. I'll do it there. There you go. Um, so, yes. Another, um, so here I added a string of LED lights, which we're also going to use for this other one, and I'll show you how I did that. Um, a second option, if not everyone can find these easily, you can find these very easily in any dollar store or craft store. And they're cool because they flicker like a real candle, and I like to add them. So, you know, with a little bit of rolled up tape under, I would just add them in front of each photo. But we'll do that later. Put these two there. Okay, so um, that is everything to begin. And now we're just going to go ahead and start with the first activity. Um, all right, so... Again, we're trying to recreate this uh, Simpasuchi flower, which in English is called a marigold, okay? So, since this altar has the more classic colors, which is the yellow and the orange, and in the back, just the full orange, I decided to make the live ones here with you, these colorful cool ones. So, you know, so I'm gonna make these I've already pre-made three at home, so I'm ready to just show you how I made that. Oh, okay, so for the materials, for this uh, Lotus de Papel, we're gonna need tissue of whatever color you like. I like using green on the bottom and whatever flower colors. Um, pipe cleaners, because, uh, because they're mini flores, I cut them into half, usually they're twice as long, they're at the craft stores, dollar stores. Um, scissors. And that's all you'll need, those three things for this activity. Um, so we're going to get the first step. And then this is the where you want to get to before you open it. So we're going to make those. I've already layered my papel the way I want. I was like, OK, I want the bottom to be green. I like the blue, the purple, the pink. OK, great. They're all in order I like. I'm going to make sure the bottom is on the bottom that I want, like the bottom of the flower is green here. It's in the bottom. And the center of my flower is a top. So that's exactly how you plan that out. Huh? So I I go with six sheets for this size. And the bigger the flower, the more sheets I add. So maybe um, just try it out and see how you like with the fullness of it. But I, I would say start with six sheets. I'm lining them up as much as I can. They were all cut from different uh, halves, so they don't match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to just kind of cut the top so they all line up a little better. And I just cut off all the excess. Okay. It's not perfect, but it's better. So I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the laptop just a bit. Longer. There you go. So you can see my hands working. Um, great. So what we call this is a fan fold. And we'll take all the edges that line up and they're gonna fold over. And I'm thinking about like half an inch or so. It doesn't have to be specific, no ruler needed. You just fold it and making sure that each fold that you're making is meeting up and lining up and you're pressing down nicely and neatly as much as you possibly can. Um, so then you just fan fold it all the way to the end. Okay. And then the last fold. So it it doesn't line up perfectly, but it's okay. If there was excess in the end here, I would just trim that. But I'm okay with this. I'm okay with that. Okay. This is the top of my flower. So I want the light green to be up and I want the dark green to be down. So with that in mind, I'm going to keep it just in that kind of direction. So fold this in half, folding it over, finding the middle, the center. Okay pressing it there. You need some pretty sturdy scissors for this part of the activity because you have to go through all six tissues folded over, which is like 12 layers. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a notch and I'm making it big enough there. The whole corner came off and I'm going to do the other side. 
So yeah. once I make my two notches, it looks kind of like a bow tie. And that's how I'm going to get this dark dragonfly looking uh, effect there. So I got this. Now I want to decide, do I want the edges to be rounded off? Because they're little and I want them to have more of the little scallop edges, I went ahead and made kind of like a heart edge. So rounded off the corners. You know, and just made it like a little indentation towards the center, almost like the top of a heart, because it gives it two scallops instead of one for every, you make two petals. If you notice, the flower is very full, lots and lots and lots of petals. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to just try to round off. All right, so we got, you know, something like this. And then I'm going to do this other side. So we got that. Now I'm going to take a pipe cleaner and I'm going to wrap it, leaving, you know, like a longer little stem, folding it over, making sure that it rips nicely and it's like nice and tight there. And then you twist to secure it. So you want it to be secure enough to where if you flap it, it doesn't fall apart or come undone. So that's right. Um, but look, I actually did something wrong. This is dark green. I wanted it to be the bottom of my flower, right? So that it has to be on the side of the stem. So see, we all make little mistakes. We got to undo real quick, turn it over. That's it. That's all we got to do. Turn it the right way up and the right way down. And then we make the stem go in the right direction. So don't worry. We've got it. Here we go. So now you start off with one half of it, opening it up kind of breaking this rigid fold. You want to kind of break those apart by squashing them just a bit so that you're ready to separate from each other. We start off with the top and we're going to bring it, while I'm holding with my other hand firmly, I am pulling gently up. And I want to pull, this first layer is probably the most important because you want it to stick straight up to where it looks like a daffodil, right? I do this side and then I do this side and I'm gonna alternate sides. If I do this whole side and then this whole side, it'll look very uneven. So don't do that. You wanna alternate this side and then we go to this side. So you may need to like lick your finger here to do this part. If you are doing it in a group setting and you're wearing masks and you need to not lick your fingers, we've come up with a solution. <laughs> we get a little dish uh, and then you get your own little sponge that's moist and then you get to moisten your fingertips. But since I'm here by myself, you're gonna see me lick my finger um, if that's okay. And you at home, you can just wash your hands and lick your finger. So you see what I'm doing is I'm taking one by one, I'm pulling it up towards the center and you want to make sure they're separating all the way to the middle from each other so that you're getting this like pool in the center look. And I, that's why I'm just going to do one of these because it is a lot of little detailed work, but each one is so beautiful coming up in different colors. Mm -hmm. So tissue paper, you can buy it anywhere, uh, dollar stores, craft stores, party supplies. Um, this is a great activity to have, not only for the other little muertos, but at any gathering, uh, party, decorate before, or just do it during. Um, I think it's great. Cynthia, I'm muted. I think he says I'm still muted and it's probably the whole time. No, no, you're okay. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> I just read it. I, I read you're still muted. I was like, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, you're all good. Great. Yeah, your flower's so, looking great. Yeah, so here we go. It's bright and colorful. What I've added now is my little uh, twist on the bottom here. I like to pull down this whole green. And what I do is I'm just going to like not calculate it at all, just go with it, move the little uh, stem over, and you're gonna 
kind of just snip at it because if you notice the real um, leaves here have, this is the kind of leaves that it has, you know? So it's like I'm trying to create that look. <laughs> so then we have that on the bottom here. So here's your flor de papel. I think it's really cute. Wow, it looks nice. The best angle. So here we go. Put it there for now. Um, so yeah, now we have our four. I'll be ready to attach those at the end. We're going to move next to the next one, which is this mini papel picado, which is the cutest thing ever. Um, I've already prepped pretty much basically when I made these, I prepped this ready to go. But for you uh, at home, you're going to have to cut it out of like a bigger size tissue. Like this is what the size looks like for the flores. Um, and this is what the size that I use here looks like for the papel picado. So if you can see it's a big difference. Um, okay. So I'm pretty sure I have a ruler. So for the papel picado, I went and did two inches by two and a half inches. So two by two and a half inches is what I got. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack them two at a time because if you notice, uh, if you're able to see, I did two the same and two the same, and they alternated to make this pattern. So I'm going to do the blue and the purple together. And then I'm going to throw in a green and a pink, just so we have these four. All right. So let me see. How can I maybe bring it closer? <laughs> All right. So you guys can see a little better there what I'm doing. So we'll start off with holding them together. It's funny to start if you guys have never, ever done this activity. Maybe make a full-size one first to get, like, warmed up. It's funny, but mini seems to be more advanced. It was kind of tricky to be able to make all of these steps happen in like mini version. But so I'm going to take the edges and I'm going to fold over. I mean, it doesn't have to be a specific measurement, but just, you know, fold it over. Oh, wait, sorry. No, that's for the floor. It's like me getting mixed up. You don't do the fan fold for this one. Um, you can, and I've done it before, but. What I've been using, again, is folding it into half three times. I like this one. You fold it into half, so the short way, right? Like, uh, what is it? Taco, not hot dog. The hot dog is the other way. So we're doing this way, the fold half. And I'm going to fold this into half again. It's hard to show on the camera what I'm doing, but I hope you understand. Folding it into half and half. And then we're going to fold it into half a third time. So that's pretty much what you have to remember, that you're folding whatever size paper you're making. Even a full tissue will be the same thing. Half, half, half. All right. So we're ending up with this tiny, tiny fold. What we're going to do is the top. I want them to really line up. So I'm going to cut off excess so that it just matches perfectly because your top, you're going to string it. And I'm going to fold over just a little bit, enough so that the string can go in there. That fold is going to tell me where I need to stop the cuts. And only on one side, the folded side, am I going to cut tiny, tiny shapes. So I would suggest using scissors like these tiny, pointy, sharp ones, if you can, because you're going to need to just snip the little tip and that's it. So as I'm cutting, I'm if you notice, I'm not going to cut above my fold. That's as much as I can go. And I'm going to cut on the folded side, the folded side, not the open side. And I'm just going to cut shape, leave a space, shape, leave a space, shape, leave a space. Um, oh, and before I do that, let's decide what is the bottom going to look like? Is it going to be pointy? Is it going to be scalloped like a half moon? So for this one, let's make it half moon which is just making it a half circle on the bottom, rounding off the corners. Let's do that. And the next two will make point two, so you can see the difference. So I made that so right there. It's hard to see it. There we go. <laughs> mini, mini. Okay, so now I'm going to cut. If I cut a triangle there, 
I don't even know if you can see my cut, but I'm going to just go ahead and cut shapes and show you in the end. I made a triangle. I'm able to carefully do tiniest heart curves because it's too small is hard. So I'm making just straight cuts and make a heart, uh, maybe a little tiny leaf looking little arrow thing. Just basic cuts that are going to look really cute. Okay. So there we go. It's uh, let me see. It's hard to see. I'm going to open it up and you're going to see better than I can show you. It's not opening. So, you so cute. All right. So we have two very delicate baby open picados here. Great. So we got them ready here. Now the next two. Real quick, fold it in half, half and half, three times. So half. So just making sure the corners are meeting and then flattening it, half and then another half. Okay. So there we go, there it is. The folded side is the side we're making shapes. Before we do that, let's fold the top down and let's decide how we want our bottom. And I think this one I'm gonna make pointy. So I'm gonna bring down my little flap so I know that's where I'm gonna string it. And then the bottom, you can see, I'm gonna hold it together and I'm gonna cut both corners, All right? Oh, it's a little crooked there, so I'm going to straighten it out. Okay. So this one is, where is it? Pointy. There it is. Now, I'm going to find my folded side, not the open side, and that's where I'm going to start off cutting my shapes. Uh, this one I'm going to make a little square first. A little square cut. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, there it is. And then a triangle cut will become a diamond because when you open it, the shape opens up. Um, square, diamond, and these little arrows are cute. Let me do that. Try to make second one. <laughs> so I encourage you to make uh, real just regular size ones and string them and hang them up in your house and you'll see how fun it is. Um, but jumping into this mini version first is tricky. <laughs> it's really tricky, so don't get discouraged. I hope it encourages you to make, see how cute, to make bigger versions. Okay, so now we have uh, these two. See how cute, well. Here, I uh, just went all extra and I made hearts to add in the center or in between, but I don't think you need to do that for this one just because of the time. But to make a heart, I pretty much uh, cut them the size that they want the heart to be. Like it was like four, like a fourth of this or something. I stacked them together, I folded them in half, and then I pretty much with a pencil drew like the top and then the heart as a half, and then I cut it. So it was all extra, but um, you can do anything you want at home. You can make skulls and put them in between. It could be so cool. Okay, so now that we have our four, I'm gonna line them up. Like what, what color pattern do I wanna have? Okay, do I want green, pink, purple, blue? Maybe green, pink, blue, and purple. I like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna measure the string and how, how long it needs to be, right, to be from one flower to the other, because I like how this turned out there. So I'm going to be like, okay, let's see. I'm gonna move this, and I'm going to check this out. Any twine yarn um, will work. So here. If I wanted to just kind of land right there and there, let's do that. I'm going to cut after that. Okay. And I'm just going to check. Oops, they're falling. I'm going to check how much I have to do. 
So I pretty much have to work with this much room and try to center them. I'm going to move this out of the way for a bit. So the best thing to do is get your two ends together and you're going to find your center. This is the center here. And we're going to make sure that the center is in between where I want it. All right. So making sure that the tops are to the top and the bottoms are to the bottom like this. Um, I'm going to center the center here and let the edges just go off to the sides this way and this way. So I'm going to push this down. All right. So for this, uh, we want to get a glue stick. Glue stick is less messy than white glue, but if that's all you have, just be very careful to put just a little tiny bit, maybe even with a brush, if you can, with a little brush, glue that with brushes okay so i want to put something under um, any i usually like to cover my table with newspaper or with any type of you know extra paper you have scratch paper so just so that we can glue i'll start with the blue one and i'm gonna just add glue just to the very top little folded part because the string is gonna go or the twine or yarn is going to go through and you're going to hug it overlap like this so i'm putting it right in the center let me see if i can show you the camera up here so see how i'm doing that okay now i can fold it down over all right and then just gently press it together and you're going to see there's one it's so cute. Okay, next. Um, I'll just try to give the same amount of room in between each one. Okay, so um, just for measurement, I'm going to use the top of the glue stick so they're all even, just to measure how far I want the next one. Okay. So there we go. Move that. And now I've placed it where I want, and I'm going to fold it over. Just be very, very gentle with it, because you've taken so many steps to get to this point that if you just rip it, you're going to need to take a break, huh? Okay. We got this too. And try to just uh, be extra neat with the pressing of it, because I noticed that when you're just not too careful, they dry really, they don't dry evenly and cool, you know. So just be extra careful. I think when you make your second one, you're even better, and you keep getting better and better at what you do. So next, I'm going to add the purple. How much time do we have for this one left, this activity? Good. Yay. All right. Oh, so I have to measure the top again just for space. And uh, to be even there, scoot it over. All right. That looks good. I'm going to tap it in there, move this, and fold it over. All right, try to be neat, pressing all that. Okay. And then the last one. I threw the top, I can't find it. So I'm just going to guess, like, oh, it's about that much. Good. And then I'm going to fold it over. Okay. I think that's as flat as I can get them. I am done with this beautiful little mini babies. Where is this? Mini baby papel picados. 
Mm -hmm. Wow, those look great. Cool. All right. So now we have the flowers. We have our flowers. We have our papel. This is great. Next, we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Got it all right here. So um, we were able to print photos. So this is my good friend who has passed, and we're going to make her a frame. This is my grandmother, and this is my tia, which is aunt, aunt, right? And my tío. So we have these pre-made so that we don't have to spend the whole time doing them. So, um, but here I will show you with this one that I haven't finished yet. Okay. So uh, when I see good thickness in chipboards or in, uh, like this is from like my dog food, it's like in between the cans. And I, I keep these because I'm like, you know, I'm going to use these for pro projects. Cereal boxes, cracker boxes, they're all the right thickness. And you want to just open them up and cut off the flaps and you have these really great panels. Um, so for this, I just went ahead and I cut off the border. Um, so you don't have to make a whole frame. You kind of just use the cardboard as your frame and just putting, adding this photo, gluing this photo onto the cardboard, it gives it the frame effect, the look that it's from. You can paint the cardboard if you want. Um, I like the brown look, like the unfinished look. I think it looks great with the contrast of all the different color and lights. I like it, but it's up to you. You can always use any type of paint that you have it will be easy to paint this cardboard. Okay. See, so we've cut it, no more white. Um, what I did is I took this and I folded it in half and I cut it and I've already gotten this so that I made them all the same size and they would look pretty similar to each other. I know that uh, there's pictures that are more squared and there's pictures that are more rectangle, but it still worked out. Let's see. For the bottom, before I glue it on, I made the little bottom stand, right? So to do that, I pretty much just took a ruler or, or at the bottom of a stapler or whatever you have around and you're gonna um, like line it up and say, oh, I wanted to fold it about uh, this much, right? So because you have this edge there, it's gonna help you fold it correctly. And I'm just gonna like, see how the best way to do it is this way. I'm gonna fold it over giving it that edge. So doing that, there we go. I made uh, something that can stand. As long as we put some tape on the back here, it'll stand. Um, okay. Next, I'm going to take the photo and I'm going to put glue on the back, but I want to center it, right? So I want to see, okay, it's going to have more room on the sides, less room on the bottom and the top. That's fine. Okay. So I'm going to place it onto the side here and I'm going to just put my scratch paper under because I don't want to get glue on the table. And I'm going to grab this. Uh, just white glue. You could also use glue stick if that's all you have. So it's like, I like to use glue stick for this and white glue for this. So uh, it all works out in the end if you have just one type. Uh, so I'm squeezing lightly. Uh, I don't want a lot of it to come out, but I'm just like trying to very, very lightly put it everywhere there. If too much of it comes out and it's a big puddle or a big, you know, just stop and get a brush or, or with your finger even like spread it, it's not a lost cause. It just, you can save it. All right. So. Okay. So now I have uh, enough glue. You can see one there. Not too, too much. Um, Try to center it before it falls on there. You just uh, right here. So from the middle out, I press simply. Just trying to straighten it all out so there's no bubbles in there. Okay, the corners, everything. 
All right. If you didn't put too much, it'll dry real soon. Uh, you can start working without it having to completely dry. You can already start embellishing. Um, if you don't have any, uh, you know, the shiny stuff, you can always take a brush and just paint details. It's beautiful markers you can use. Um, so here I have this little bag of cool stuff. Um, you know, so they have uh, all this sticker version of all this cool stuff. Roses, hearts. I like these little teardrop ones. They're cute. Uh, these sequins work great with glue. So however you want to do this, I'm just going to lay it all out here so I have it. Okay. Um, this part is just, okay, what was their favorite color? Do you want to add their name to it? Um, for mine, because they're tiny, I was like, no, the name won't fit and it's just going to take room. But if it's a bigger picture, maybe write their name on there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just make hers. With hearts and um, probably start with the, this. Let me see. All right. So I'll put a heart on either side. I'm going to put a. Uh, little teardrop in the middle so so far this is what I have right so I'm going to try to just uh, do the corners the edges and then embellish in between um, I like these little ones because they're a good filler in between them they give it from colorful to dark just mix it up maybe think of yeah what their favorite color is what they liked um, I'm going to make hers colorful. <laughs> All right. Let me see if we can see better. There we go. You can see a little better. I'm trying to get closer. And then I'm going to throw in, I like these circular ones. These are nice little jewels into green. Um, I'm going to put three roses on the bottom. I like that the roses come uh, in a strip together too. I can just add them. So when I'm adding all the stuff, I make sure that I'm not uh, get going down past that fold because remember it's going to stand so let's go up pressing these stay pretty well actually the sticker works out okay uh, I'm just mixing it up all the different shapes and colors and that I think are cool together um, I'm going to do this dark green So again, this is what I have so far. Okay. Um, let's see, these little hearts are cool. Maybe we'll add in the middle here. So I try to do like, you don't have to, but I try to like, if I put a heart here, I'm gonna put a heart here. I kind of say, oh, I know the colors are all over the place, but because you're putting them across from each other, it kind of, they just it just starts kind of going you know it's like oh i see what's going on there even if it's all over the place thank you thank you all right let's see so then i just look at the jewels i have and i'm like what colors would be cool there let's see huh let's think about that it's getting colorful but i like it <laughs> um these yellow ones i think i like up here That's cool. Let me see which one matches that. It's this one. All right. So it's almost full. And I'm going to go ahead and just fill in the parts in between with these black 
because they're cool they're strands you can use them separately or together i mean you can order these online or you can go to a craft store even dollar stores i think would have it the cool thing about these is that they're see-through here and i can just like check oh okay i need one two three four five six fit in there and then i do six on this side and six on that side and we just crank out these frames no no i think it's beautiful uh when you're making something for someone especially someone that has passed you're making it and you can't help but think about them and think about like oh would she like this oh would would she want me to add to this and i think that these moments that you get to have while you're making something uh, for someone that's so special is important in the process of, of grieving and letting someone go from this physical world and from they'll never leave your heart they'll ne never they'll never leave your mind but doing this once a year is very 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 special okay so it's not going to be perfectly matching or anything because that's how it goes but I think it's looking pretty cool. And then same thing down here. I'm going to say three fit. Okay, we're going to cut three for here. And then three more on this side. Okay, so there we go. Uh, I think I'm going to stop here. I really like how this is working out. Oh, I might just put something in between. Okay, so I see here that it's almost time to finish up. Uh, and I'm glad because we're done. No, now we're just going to put it together. Okay, so we have our frames. So one, two, three, four frames. Um, we're going to put together the papel picado and the flowers. Um, attaching all of this to the altar isn't as fun as watching all of this, but um, I think I'm just going to show you to at least, since you already saw that this one is complete, you get to really see like, oh, okay, that's what it's all going to look like. Um, but because it's let me see how much time do I have left. I have like ten minutes. Okay. So maybe flip it up a little bit. Yeah, I see it's nice. Okay. So um, in order to attach the frames, I put some tape. Any type of tape works. Um, I have clear tape, which is first choice, right? Clear tape works out. Um, okay, so I'm going to put the tape along the top so that... Okay, I don't know if you can see that there, but I put it along there, the edge, so that it sticks onto the box. Before I tape him down, my Theo, I'm going to put the flowers where I want them. I'm going to tape the stem down. So just to kind of get a quick glance of like how I want it. Okay, I want one in this corner. I want another one on this corner there. And then I probably want to do the other two like I did there, out and out here. Okay. Um, the papel picado, I'm going to want to tape it to the top. But to secure those down, just to show you, we get some tape. And I'm going to tape the stem down to the box. So just kind of tape and then down. 
Next. Okay, I'm going to place it. Tape. That's cute. So for this one, I'm going to tape it to the inside of the box and I'm going to have it come out like this. I don't want it to be in, but coming out. There we go. Same thing with that one. So I'm probably going to have to reinforce with more tape, but because of time, I'm just trying to show you real fast here. There we go. I mean, I could probably scoot it over some more, but for now, we'll leave it there. Or add more. I would probably just make more flowers. This one's bigger. And I would add flowers to the bottom, maybe the whole row here. That'd be cool. Um, so I'll do the papel picado last. Uh, I'll add the frame. At least, at least I will add one frame here. Oops, I got stuck. Okay, watch the tape. So since I've taped the bottom from the top down, it's able, I'm gonna kind of refold it so it like presses the right way. Now I'm gonna put this one right there. Cause I'm putting four in here. I'm kind of not centering it. I'm going off to the side just a bit so that the other ones fit, right? I'm just gonna place them And I'll tape them later, but I want to just show. Oops, this one has tape. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. All right, that's cool. And then this one, just so it doesn't fall. Oop, last to the tape. <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right. So there. Okay. Here we need water. Do you have a little water? Ah. Okay. So here we're gonna add a little paper, and this represents the water. Usually we put a little water in there and add it to the altar. So there we go. Here I'm gonna. Add a candle, the water, maybe the water can go, right, no, it's too, that's too close. I'll put it um, in the middle and then the candle, Let's see if you can see it. It's hiding the candle, hmm. put the candle in front of it. Okay, so usually uh, we would put, a, this is so cute, little mini version of taquitos. <laughs> um, we have a mini bottle of Coke, which, you know, usually you have your, your bottle of Coke with your taquitos right here. So we're adding the ofrenda there. These are uh, always one of our favorites, the mini corn. I'm going to add that. Um, so my tío was known to always have a uh, little mini uh, chihuahua like his whole life, like he's always had little. So I'm gonna add that just, I'm sure he has little bebes that have also passed, but it, just to me, like I remember my tío with his perritos, you know? And then we're offering these to our loved ones because it is said that when they smell these uh, flowers and it's actually the green that smells even more than the flower itself, that this scent brings them and it brings them all the way to your home and that's why you uh, you add it to the altares here. So we're going to put them, I'm going to say this way. I'm going to add these. 
The last thing that I forgot and I jumped over, I didn't do, is the papel picado. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. We have like minutes left, but it'll make a big difference here. So see some of them are up and some of them are down, but we're going to be okay with that. We're going to center them. And we're going to probably just tape them wherever we like them. Thank you. Can you help me hold it up here? Tape it when I see it. So just tape it from behind, see where it lands and you like it, centered. Um, flip them if they need to be flipped. <laughs> see how they dry funny. Okay, um, I think this is where, yep, yeah, we'll just do that there. So we are done. Oh, wait, one more thing. So I added these LED lights to the other one, but as you you know, know that you would probably just take the battery pack and I tucked it in the back. And then that's when I uh, just added the lights, the back of the frames and stuff. Sorry about that. I should have probably done it before the papel picado, but it's hard to do from the front and the back here, but I'm gonna just add them in there. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so move all the stuff away from it. This is the finished, <laughs> our finished of that here that we made together. And um, this is the other second one. So thank you so much for joining us today. Do we have any Yeah, it looks, uh, no questions from the audience. Uh, that looks great. I like how you added the, the little touches with the tacos and the and the little Coke and the little yeah. perrito. So cool. So then like uh, you can personalize them, right? For like any of the people that uh, that you're honoring, um, just any things that they liked or, you know, things that remind you of them and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, some people, because we have like memories of somebody, they always like to have their cigarette out there. But, you know, you know, them. For, they, they do add like a cigarette next to their picture or this person always had coffee in the mornings or so that they, they add coffee to it. It's just, it's a beautiful detail to be able to just, um, yeah. So. Yeah. It's a kind of a thing. It's also like, if you go like around this time to, um, to the cemeteries and all that, you'll see the same kind of deal. You'll see like the things that the people liked and all that. Yeah. So here I am putting together a basket uh, I really love, I had never seen a purple conchita before. Oh, so cool. It's so beautiful. Um, nice. so that, That's a cool color. Yeah, so it's purple. Usually the traditional ones are either chocolate, strawberry, or white, which is, you know, just classic. So I'm going to add these as ofrendas. Ofrendas is a, like an offering uh, to them when they come and visit. So when you put out food and, and drinks and things in the altar, they're not to be eaten. They're for them. They're for them to... Um, enjoy while they're visiting you because uh, you're you're putting together a party for them to come and see you once a year um okay i'll leave it like this it's also said that if uh i don't know if it's true because i've never tried the food after i've left it out in the altar but it is said that the food doesn't have the same flavor even mm. if you were to eat it after so interesting. Like yeah i thought that was interesting and then uh again uh this is all available uh in the uh, the activity book Right, and we have that in the uh, program description. So if you're interested, um, you can go and check it out. You can print one, you can download it. It's a zine, so it's very easy to follow. Um, go ahead and, and uh, join us November 5th here. We have a huge event uh, at Self Help Graphics. For the awesome. Yeah, um, I remember going to the to the old Self Help, the one that was on uh, uh, Brooklyn and Gage. Yeah. Yeah, and now y'all are located. Oh, what's your address? I forget off the top of my head. We're on First and Anderson in Boyle Heights, thirteen hundred East First Street. Yeah, Boyle yeah, Heights. Yeah, so check them out, and then we'll pop up the, the visit the website if you like. Follow them on Instagram. Yeah, thank you very much for 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 doing this, Martha. It was very much appreciated. Everybody at home can try them. 
uh, you know, you can honor your, your, your loved ones that have passed. Yeah. Thank yeah, you thank for having me. This was so fun. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oops, sorry. And thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, remember to check out all of the library's online uh, calendar at lapl.org slash events and lapl.org slash LAMade for upcoming LA Maids, including our next program on Thursday, November 17th at 4 p.m., uh, LA Made Witnesses for the Dead. Join the Los Angeles Public Library for the virtual panel discussion featuring some of today's best mystery writers, including Gary Phillips, Aaron Philip Clark, Sarah M. Chen, Gar Anthony Haywood, Todd Goldberg, and Pamela Samuels Young. They will be talking about Witnesses for the Dead, a new crime anthology that asks the question, how does witnessing a crime change a person? Those attending the virtual program will have an opportunity to win a free book. So until next time, we truly support, uh, appreciate all of your support. The success of LA Made and all of our library programs could not happen without viewers like you. So thank you very much. <laughs>